Welcome to the October 14, 2020 regular board meeting of the Chino Valley District Board of Directors. The time is 5 p.m. This is President Harvey Luth and we will now begin the meeting. Please be advised that this meeting will be recorded. Please silence your cell phones and devices to reduce background noise or disruption. In accordance with the California Governor's Executive Order N-29-20, guidance from the California Department of Public Health, and in an effort to combat the spread of COVID-19, the Chino Valley Fire District will hold all regular and special meetings of the Board of Directors remotely in a hybrid format using GoToWebinar until further notice. Board members may be present in the boardroom and will accommodate physical attendance by the public. The public may join the meeting real-time in listen-only mode. Instructions in the GoToWebinar URL link for the meeting are listed on the agenda. Our agenda is posted on our website at cbifd.org. Please be advised that when you join the meeting in real time, your screen name will appear on the GoToWebinar screen. The board will accept public comment on all items on the agenda and other public communications. Instructions for participating in public comment are listed on the agenda and on the fire district website. The public had three options for participating in public comment. One option for participating in public comment was to submit comments to the clerk of the board at, by email at clerk at chofire.org prior to the beginning of the meeting. Comments received by email will be read real time by the clerk of the board during the specified time. The emails are limited to 300 words. Please note that your name will be read into the record. The second option for participating in the public comment real time was to register prior to the meeting on the go to webinar URL listed on this agenda. If you have registered for public comment, the clerk of the board will call on you and unmute your microphone when it's your turn to speak. Attendees may also need to unmute their own devices to be heard. The third option is for the public to attend the board meeting and submit a request to speak form to the clerk of the board or designee. When your name is called, begin the public comments by stating your name and address, which is optional for the record. Comments must be limited to five minutes. For a recorded viewing of the board meeting, you may access the fire district website the day following the meeting at www.cbifd.org and click on board meeting video archive. I will now open a meeting and take roll. Please answer when I call your name. Director Wynn Williams. Here. Director Mike Krieger. Here. Director John DeMonico. Present. Vice President Sarah ramos Evinger. Present. And myself, President Harvey Lou. I would like to remind those joining us by GoToWebinar to please mute your microphone and tell us your time to speak to cut down on any background noise. Before I adjourn the open session to closed session portion of the meeting, I will read the closed session item. Conference with Real Property Negotiator. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.8, the Board of Directors will meet with its designated negotiator, Fire Chief Ken Schackelberg, regarding real property owned by the City of Chino Hills and located on an undeveloped parcel located on the south side of Sokol Canyon at the intersection of Sokol Canyon and Pipeline Avenue. The Board of Directors will instruct the district's negotiator concerning the price and terms of payment. Clerk of the Board, do we have any pub public comments on any of the closed session items? Good afternoon. We have no public comment on the closed session item. All right, and no one present has any comments? Okay. I will now adjourn the open session to closed session. We will return to the regular board meeting open session at 6 p.m. Staff members who are not participating in closed session are asked to are now asked to leave the boardroom until 6 p.m. when the open session resumes. When the closed session adjourns, those adjourning the meeting, joining the meeting remotely, will join the same GoToWebinar link at 5.45 p.m. for a sound check and stay on until the open session begins. After the sound check, remember to keep your microphone muted until 6 p.m. when the open session resumes. Welcome to the October 14, 2020 regular board meeting of the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors. The time is 6 p.m. This is President Harvey Luth and we will now begin the meeting. Please be advised that this meeting will be recorded. Please silence your cell phones and devices to reduce background noise or, or disruption. In accordance with the California Governor's Executive Order N-29-20, guidance from the California Department of Public Health and in an effort to combat the spread of COVID-19, the Chino Valley Fire District will hold all regular and special meetings of the Board of Directors remotely in a hybrid format using GoToWebinar until further notice. Board members may be present in the boardroom and will accommodate physical attendance by the public. The public may join the meeting real-time in listen-only mode. Instructions 
in the GoToWebinar URL link for the meeting are listed on the agenda. Our agenda is posted on our website at tbifd.org. Please be advised that when you join the meeting in real time, your screen name will appear on the GoToWebinar screen. The board will accept public comment on all items on the agenda and under public communications. Instructions for participating in public comment are listed on the agenda and on the fire district website. The public had three options for participating in public comment. One option for participating in public comment was to submit comments to the clerk of the board by email at clerk at chofire.org prior to the beginning of the meeting. Comments received by email will be read real time by the clerk of the board during the specified time. The emails are limited to 300 words. Please note that your name will be read into the record. The second option for participating in public comment real time was to register prior to the meeting at the GoToWebinar URL listed on this agenda. If you have registered for public comment, the clerk of the board will call on you and unmute your microphone when it's your turn to speak. Attendees may also meet, need to unmute their own devices to be heard. The third option is for the public to attend the meeting, the board meeting, and submit a request to speak form to the clerk of the board or designate. When your name is called, begin the public comment by stating your name and address, which is optional for the record. Comments must be limited to five minutes. For recorded viewing of the board meeting, you may access the fire district website the day following the meeting at www.cbifd.org and click on board meeting video archive. I will now open the meeting and take roll call. Please answer when I call your name. Director Wynn Williams. Here. Director Mike Krieger. Here. Director John DeMichael. Present. Vice President Sarah Ramos Evinger. Present. And myself, President Harvey Booth. <laughs> I would like to remind everyone joining remotely to please mute your phone until it's your time to speak to cut down on any background noise. Legal counsel, please report out of closed session. Yes, uh, Honorable President, members of the board, members of the public, the board met in closed session earlier tonight to discuss the one item that is listed on the agenda and there was no formal action. Thank you. And now if you'd rise and join me in uh, our flag and then remain standing for our invocation. Ready to begin. Let us we cease to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Robert Lewis, our district chaplain, is joining us, joining us to present the invocation. Chaplain? Thank you. Board members and company, will you please bow your heads as we pray together? Holy Father, thank you for giving us this privilege to pray. We ask your blessings on all the members of the board and their families. We also pray for all the employees of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District. Lord, please touch the tongues and hearts of all the members of this board so that words and emotions would be pleasing to you and understood by each other. May the topics discussed and the decisions made be in agreement with your will for the greater good of us all. We pray that your shield of protection from the coronavirus will cover all of us and who are in this place, in this town at this time and beyond. We pray for the comfort of the family who have lost loved ones. Holy Father, our prayer is that the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chaplain. You're welcome. Clerk of the Board, do we have any changes to the agenda? President Luke, we have no changes to the agenda. Thank you. Next, we have presentations and announcements. First up, we have San Bernardino County COVID-19 update. County Fourth District Chairman Kirk Hagman. Chairman Kirk Hagman. Bernardino County Board of Supervisors is here with us this evening to provide an update on the state of COVID-19 in San Bernardino County. Hey, good evening, um, board members, and good evening, Mr. President. It's nice to be back. Um, you know, I'll basically give you the highlights. Is we, you know, two weeks ago we had 10 days under the state's number threshold to get us out from purple to red, and that means a lot to all of us because if we get to red, it means we can open up, you know, restaurants for indoor dining and and other things like that, um, as well as open up our schools. Um, we needed two full weeks of that lower number, and then we bounced back up 
uh, probably due to Labor Day surge of people um, having fun with their friends and family, which you see about 60% of our COVID spread is between family members and you know, friends and family, basically, group gatherings. Um, so our numbers went above the limit, and um, so therefore we're still in purple. And as of today, we're still above the threshold. Um, we're a little frustrated as well on the board, and I'm sure as all the residents are and businesses that are frustrated with the, the governor's changing numbers all the time on us, what we need to do to open, what we uh, to stay open. Uh, we just had three or four different changes since the last two months. Um, so we're pushing back a little bit. We have sent a letter to both the governor with our mayor signed on as well as um, to the president saying, you know, please fix the way we are doing things and um, don't hold our money back um, from the governor's changing uh, demographics and stuff. But we're, we're still up. We're up to about 60,000 confirmed cases, really about 55, 986 deaths. And um, we're up to almost 700,000 testing. Now, I talked about the changing metrics from the state. It is one of the things we're based on is how many tests per day we do in this county and what that positive versus negative ratio is. Um, one of the things we got penalized and we still continue to be penalized on is the fact that we do not, we are, according to their standards, not testing enough um, per day. So we need to increase about a, a thousand tests a day so we aren't penalized by the governor in his matrix. That actually raises us about a half percentage point um, and we get graded like every Tuesday. So we need to get people out to test. I go out quite a bit and test myself. Uh, I just went yesterday, I went last week. I dragged uh, Jonathan and Elizabeth in with me so they both got tests yesterday. Hopefully we're adding to the county's numbers but we need to get it you know, the rest of the county, they also get tested. It's very easy, it's painless, and it's free. So we're gonna encourage everyone to go out and get tested as much as we can. Um, we also been seeing, I forgot the latest number we have, but quite a few businesses um, apply and be accepted for our COVID business uh, compliant program. So we're very happy that they're doing that, which is a, a small check to help those that are struggling stay open or comply with the orders to, um, you know, be a COVID compliant business with the state. So we're encouraging people to look on our website to uh, continue to work in that program. Um, we're also seeing a trend, which is um, bad for us right now. Of uh, LA County is a lot harder on people doing the bad things than we are. We don't do a, a code enforcement penalty right now. So because of that, um, we're seeing a lot of their businesses and concert promoters come into San Bernardino County. So we're considering an ordinance in San Bernardino County so we can stop those who are basically having large um, events. We've seen a lot of rod rod rodeos, um, rave, illegal rave concerts, and a few other things come out that are um, contributing to our numbers. So we're asking, you know, we'll be discussing probably in the next meeting or two when that we should um you know have the ability to find those businesses who are defying our state and county orders and bringing large group large group gather, gatherings together to be what we consider super spreading events so that's what we're trying to look at right now to give us some tools right now the only tools we have you know toolbox is the ability to you know we're going to arrest somebody which we're not going to do over these type of things where, where the governor's making this release everybody as well. So anyway, we're looking at the, the civil compliant program, you know, a um, code enforcement type of fine and our, one of our future events. It really doesn't mean anything to our churches or any other public events we have. Our residents is strictly for these uh, big promoters of illegal activities, illegal events that are not permitted within the county of San Bernardino. We're, I will also say I want to thank you for being a great partner with the county. Um, I've been talking with your chief. Um, we're looking at quite a bit of money going out from the CARES Act to local jurisdictions. Um, what we have done is um, the county has either we can spend it ourselves or pass it out. So I decided we're going to pass out the local entities, including fire districts, our cities, as well as um, school districts, to make sure that our COVID 
um, expenses are shared among all our local governments. And so we did that. And Chino Valley Fire is looking at a number of um, projects that we could work together. I know all the chiefs got together in all the county to look at telemedicine op opportunities and a few other things around this, uh, the county that we could be working together on. And I'm very excited about those programs. So thank you uh, for being a great partner with us. And we look forward to where this may take us with those COVID funds. We put out roughly about 110 million, 20 million of that going to fire districts. So that's exciting for us as well. And we want to again, thank you guys for being good partners. I think we're also very close to finally, 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 finally having a uh, deal with AMR and the ambulance service with the support of fire districts and details and that to be shared in the future, but it'd be almost like a joint partnership working together. So we're excited for that as well. But with that, I'll open up to questions and I wanna thank you for all your support. Questions? Uh, Supervisor Nick, do you have to note locations? I know last night, Chief of Hill, they discussed they brought big five up to the 19th. And something like, do you have that or can you provide that to us? We have multiple locations throughout the county. Um, there's an easy way to sign up online. In fact, I drove yesterday to get tested and I didn't have an appointment. So if you scan your QR code, it's in your car for like five minutes and fill it out. But um, yeah, just look on the SD COVID-19 website and it has different locations. Sign up really quickly and easy on the website to make sure that we can, you know, you're walking in and out within five minutes. It doesn't take very long at all. There's no lines, very simple process. And it gives you that assurance that you're not one of those people that may have it that don't know they have it with no symptoms and make sure that your family's safe and you go home. All right. Well, yeah, thank you, Supervisor Hanger. We appreciate the update. Thank you for having me on. Have a great evening. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Breast Cancer Awareness Month announcement. The regular board meeting held on September 9, 2020, the fire district proclaimed October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The district personnel on board will wear breast cancer awareness pins throughout the month of October as an expression of support for raising awareness for prevention, treatment, and a cure. Next, we have 105 years of wildfires in the Chino Hills State Park presentation. Melanie Schlotterbeck is a technical consultant for Hills for Everyone, which is a regional nonprofit conservation organization. The organization founded Chino Hills State Park designed the park, and worked with legislators to generate funds for acquisitions. Those for Everyone's board of directors are made up of residents, community leaders, and former elected officials. Through her work, Melanie completed a study on 105 years of wildfires in Chino Hill State Park, and this evening she will provide an overview of the findings. Melanie? Good evening. So as you heard, my name is Melanie Schlotterbeck, and I'm here on behalf of Hills for Everyone, and that's the group that founded Chino Hills State Park. Tonight, I'm going to present on our 105-year uh, wildfire study. Next slide. This presentation focuses on two topics, so let's begin with our organization and the state park. Next slide. In the mid-1970s, with the threat of an international airport actively being planned for the Chino Hills area, residents organized to establish a state park instead. Next slide. The state park's first acquisition was in 1981, and the park continues to expand with the latest acquisition in 2011. Through more than 30 different acquisitions, the park has been assembled to grow to more than 14,100 acres. Next slide. The park was created to protect many rare and natural resources. Its gently rolling hills are covered in grasslands and dotted with native oak trees. In the steep canyons of the interior, sycamore-lined streams and walnut woodlands abound. Next slide. Our mission expanded. Whoops, we seem to have lost a slide. 
So I'll stay here for just a moment. Our mission expanded from simply protecting the park to instead preserving the unique and disappearing landscapes of the entire Puente Chino Hills, which extends from the 91 and 71 freeways near Corona to the 60 and 605 freeways near Whittier. So moving on to the fire side of things, why did we decide to do a study? Next slide. Well, this seems to have gotten out of order. So Will, I talked about this one just a moment ago in terms of the uh, extent of the wildlife corridor. Go ahead and move to the next slide. So in terms of why we decided to do a study in the aftermath of the 2008 freeway complex fire, which devastated the state park, Hills for Everyone launched a study in 2012 to try to understand why so many fires burned in the area and to reduce the number of fires. This would result in the protection of both houses and natural resources. We updated the study in 2019 to see if any new trends were emerging. Next slide. So our study had three goals, to understand the fire patterns, analyze the results and figure out where the fire prone areas were and provide recommendations to reduce the fires. Next slide. The study resulted in the digital history of more than 151 fires that burned between 1914 and 2018. Next slide. On this and future maps, the park is in green, while the study area is in the medium blue box near the 91, 71, 60, and 57 freeways. Next slide. Hills for Everyone secured the GIS or digital data sets of fire perimeters and points of origin from many fire agencies. We did not create new data. We used others data to create a master data set of fires. Next slide. Fire perimeters are defined as the farthest geographical extent, also known as the outer boundary of a fire. Just so you know, not all areas within the perimeter necessarily burn. We were able to put on the map 71 fire perimeters in our first study. With our updated study, we added 19 perimeters, taking the total to 90 perimeters. Next slide. This map shows all of the original 71 fire perimeters that were uncovered in the study area. Next slide. This map shows all 90 perimeters with 19 new perimeters now showing in blue. Next slide. Points of origin are the approximate or exact location where a wildland fire ignited within the study area. We were able to put on the map 70 points of origin from our original study. And the most recent update included adding 36 new points of origin, bringing the total to 106. Next slide. This map shows all 70 points of origin used in the original study. Next slide. And now the new blue ignition points, 36 of those locations have been added, again, bringing the total to 106. Next slide. This is the same map, but the points of origin are now displayed based on if we know the cause or not. If we know what started the fire, the flame is in the orange color. If not, it is grayed out. Next slide. Again, this is the same map, but the points of origin are now displayed based on the actual fire cause. So if a fire was started due to a car fire, a car symbolizes that point of origin. If it was a plane crash that started the fire, we use the symbol of a plane. So what's the tally? Next slide. Well, what we found is that most fires had an unknown ignition cause. Next slide. From what we do know, most fires start because of arson, automobiles, and fireworks. Next slide. What we should be looking at is which fires start due to natural causes, lightning. This fits what one would expect to see in a chaparral and coastal sage scrub environment where there's a fire every 30 to 150 years. That's the natural fire regime. Next slide. When you look at natural fire causes, lightning strikes, there were two. 
This makes sense because we don't live in the type of geography that gets many lightning storms. Next slide. That means the remainder of the fires, 149 to be exact, were human caused. So 1.4 fires are burning every year. That means humans are influencing the natural fire regime and changing the frequency of fires for this park. This has already influenced the habitat and its viability. Next slide. It's not surprising that in the hotter, drier months between May and November, there are more fires than in the moister winter months between December and April. Next slide. There is a clear correlation between the fire frequency and summer months. The majority of the fires, though, occur in July. Next slide. However, October and November have the largest average acres burned. This is likely due to the fact that it's the end of the dry season and those months tend to be prone to Santa Ana wind conditions. Next slide. The Santa Ana winds, which come from the east and northeast, are the exception. And as these winds tend to be hot and dry, fires that start under these extreme conditions have a tendency to get out of hand. The star generally indicates where we are located. Next slide. We also researched the weather patterns from the fires that were included in the study. And just like common sense tells us, high heat, high wind, and low humidity days tend to be prime fire conditions. Next slide. Most fires start under normal conditions when the wind is blowing from the west. Next slide. Our next step was to overlap all of the fire perimeters to determine the fire frequency. The lightest color on the map indicates that the area only burned once, whereas the darkest color on the map, black, indicates that the area burned eight or more times. I've also included the ignition points to provide a more complete picture. Next slide. So what does this tell us? It tells us we need to reduce fire ignitions in four locations. Along the 91 freeway, the unplanned entrance to Chino Hill State Park at Rimcrest, along Carbon Canyon Road, and from the 2019 study shown in blue, identified the 57 freeway corridor near Tonner Canyon and Lambert as a new hot spot. Next slide. There are plenty of things that fire agencies, transportation agencies, nonprofits, and residents can do to reduce fire ignitions. We provided recommendations in our study, but here are four examples. Hardening the roadway edges, providing outreach during community events, removing invasive fire spreading plants, and homeowners can clear gutters, install ember-proof fence, and box your roof eaves. Next slide. And with that, I hope I've provided you with some understanding about the big picture as it relates to fire in our hills. The updated fire study is available on our website, hillsforeveryone.org. And Hills for Everyone is always happy to partner and identify ways to reduce wildfire risks near the state park. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? Okay. So, Melanie, thank you so much. I know you and your mother have dedicated um, your life towards uh, Hills for Everyone. I just, I have um, a couple of questions. So, in your, well, how, how has this study changed your way, the way you personally view fire, wildfires? Good question. Um, I think what it made me realize is that fire agencies view natural lands as fuel, whereas the reason the lands were protected for state park purposes, they view it through the lens as a natural resource. And so we need to find a balance between um, how the agencies are viewing the land, but ultimately it comes down to uh, the fact that more access, more people, more roads, more cars, more things to ignite the brush on fire is actually changing the reason the state park was, was created. Okay, thank you. And I just have one um, one last question for you. So, with this study that um, that you guys um, did, and thank it, it is just it's very, very, very good. What 
should decision makers or builders, what do they need to understand um, when they decide to put homes um, in the areas that are prone to burn in high um, wildfire areas? Also a great question. So we know that uh, there are land designations as it relates to fire. So high fire hazard severity zones and very high fire hazard severity zones. So that's a key indicator that you're putting people in a risky location. And what fire science tells us, and this isn't just, you know, the research that we've done, but fire science from, you know, USGS and others, is that where fires have burned before, they will burn again and there's a pattern to it. And it doesn't actually matter if houses and roads are now in that location. Uh, the, the topography, the way the wind blows, et cetera, all of those factor in. So planning matters and fire frequency matters. And there's ultimately consequences that come with a decision related to planning. And I think it's important for decision makers to realize that when you decide to put people in a location that has burned multiple times, that residents that are buying in those locations think that it's safe because you're approving the project. And yet, as we saw with the freeway complex fire, we lost or had damaged or destroyed nearly 300 properties. And while that was an exceptional event related to the Santa Ana winds, it just goes to show you you really have no control over the fire until the winds die down. And you can throw manpower and water and aerial support onto it, but it doesn't change the fact winds are still blowing. So we need to be cognizant of location, location, location. I'd like to comment. Yeah. Melanie, thank you so much for the presentation. and. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the detailed report too. I reviewed that and it's, uh, actually a couple of times and I really appreciate it. Just want to thank you for sending that to us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Ms. Melody, thank you. Uh, yeah, I thank you for the hard copy of the report. Good information. I appreciate your efforts and, and how dedicated you are to this and your concerns. Thank you. And thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. No problem. Take care. All right. Okay, next we have public, he uh, public hearing. Public hearings will shall be held in accordance with the following procedure. Any person wishing to speak was provided with information on, on the agenda for participating in public hearing through the public comment process by contacting the clerk of the board. When addressing the board of directors, please state your name, address, or area of residence, which is optional, and the organization or association you represent, if any, for the record spelling your last name. Uh, so now the public hearing is now open. We have uh, public uh, properties declared for weed abatement. Purpose is to receive public comment on the declaring and noticing of property owners for weed abatement. Fire Marshal Danielle Barnes, please present your report. Good evening, President Luce and members of the board. At the September 9th board meeting, resolution 2020-13 was adopted identifying properties declared for weed abatement. Property owners were sent notices on September 10th by first class and certified mail and were given until today to abate their property. Reinspections inspections will commence tomorrow and any properties found to be non-compliant will be assessed a penalty and are subject to be cleared by our private contractor. It is recommended that the board of directors receive public comment on the declaring and noticing of property owners for weed abatement, as well as make any rulings on any and all objections raised regarding the proposed removal of weeds. Thank you. Is there anyone present wishing to speak on this item? Clerk of the Board, do we have any public comments on this agenda item? We have no public comments. Okay, then the public hearing is now closed. This is time for the Board to comment. Director Williams. Um, thank you very much. Uh, the only comment I have is uh, how has compliance uh, gone on this, Danielle? Uh, there are very many that uh, are going to be so we'll have a better idea tomorrow, but just if driving through the district and the feedback that I received from staff, it seems that the majority of the properties on the list, because we had over 500, have been complying. So we're getting good compliance and uh, people are taking care of their problems at safe point. Yes. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad to hear that. Director Krieger, thank you and your staff. Keep it up. Thank you. Director DeMonaco. 
Department Director Krieger. Thank you very much and keep up the great work. This is coming year round uh, concern for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Ronald Evinger. Okay, comments. Okay, and yeah, I get it. I agree. Thank you for all your efforts, you and your staff. Uh, appreciate it very much. Thanks for the support. Next, we have public communications. This is the time and place for the general public to address the board of directors about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. The public may address items on the agenda at the time addressed by the board. Due to board policy and Brown Act requirements, action may not be taken on any issue not on the agenda. When you address the board, please state your name and address, which is optional, prior to making your remarks. Please limit your comments to five minutes. I have one request, written request uh, from Steve Eli. I'm actually going to pass. I'll just do my VA on report. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else present to comment at all? Clerk of the board, do we have any uh, requests to speak? We have no additional requests to speak. Okay, thank you. Well, next we have liaison reports to the fire district. Clerk of the board, do we have any liaison speaking? Um, yes, with us this evening is Mayor Art Bennett, City of Chino Hills. Will you please come forward? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, President Lou, staff, and uh, Chief Shackford and uh, the command staff. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to commend uh, Chief Shackford. He was at the entire meeting of the council last night until uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, we always appreciate uh, getting our public information uh, officer to talk and also our safety officer. So uh, Chief Shackford and, and Captain John Walker always give us the update on what's going on with the fire district and the police department. Uh, I'll run through the a quick report on the things that are coming up in the city. Um, we have a, a city operations update. Uh, you've already heard all about COVID-19, so we'll, we won't say much about that other than the fact that the city has reopened playgrounds and exercise stations under new state guidance October 1st. New state guidance with uh, private outdoor gatherings of three households are now allowed through the state as of October 9th. Chino Hills Community Center and the McCoy Equestrian and Recreation Center are closed through November 1st. Uh, volleyball and basketball courts are still closed. Street sweeping, we are not issuing tickets, but we're putting reminder notices on get back in the habit uh, because it is essential that we uh, get our streets clean because if we don't, the rain comes along and all that garbage gets put in the, the, the drain uh, and down in the, the, the uh, flood control system. And as we always say, nothing but rain in the drain. Uh, veterans activities. This year's veterans uh, event won't be a traditional event. Typically we have a, a veterans breakfast, uh, but uh, what we've had in the last few years just is, just does not seem to, like it's going to be able to work. We can't have a gathering, but we came up with an idea and I will take credit for it. Uh, what I'm trying to do is have one of our local restaurants like Chick-fil-A, uh, they're always giving out breakfast sandwiches uh, you know, various organizations. So we're trying to plan a drive-through uh, veterans breakfast that will be held and we're getting more details. Uh, we, this will of course happen, I think, before your next meeting uh, because you go dark. But we'll get the word out there for all of our veterans. Uh, our plan is generally to have the drive-through in the general vicinity of the veterans monument near the community center. So we're hopeful that that will happen and uh, we, we know that we've got good generous restaurant chains that will, I'm sure, come forward on that one. Uh, we also have a line, a lawn sign program and would like to deliver a sign thanking our local veterans for their service. Visit the website to request a veteran sign at no cost. That's chinohills.org slash veterans to get more about that. Residents who would like to honor veterans uh, can order a different lawn sign for their yard to cost us $10 and we will release a video honoring our veterans on Veterans Day. I'm planning on uh, uh, filming that on October 21st. Uh, movies in the parking lot this Saturday, October 17th, just in time for Halloween. The 2019 animated movie, The Addams Family, rated PG, will be uh, held at the Oak Park lot there, what we call Shops 2, next year Administration Building. 
Uh, that would be ten dollars uh, per car, one ticket per household. Uh, ChinoHills.org/movies for that. Uh, voter education Zoom uh, web webinar. Uh, we had a report, formal report by our county registrar last night, uh, Bob Page. Uh, there is going to be one coming up on October 15th. I guess that is tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Advanced registration is required. You can go to ChinoHills.org/voter-education-webinar. It gives people all of the answers and all the cons answers the concerns that everybody's hearing. The media is going crazy with this about voter fraud and what you can do and what's going to happen. And we had a great report last night. There are only so many designated authorized places to drop off your mail or your vote, uh, or voter packet or ballot. Uh, so there will be specific instructions on how to do that. And uh, let's see. Uh, secure ballot uh, uh, drop in in the city of Chino Hills. There is only one, and it's at the entrance uh, to the uh, library right across from your administration again. So if, if you live in the city and you want to do that, and you basically if you live in San Bernardino County, you can drop them off at any authorized. Uh, they're bolted to the ground. They're locked. Uh, they can't be tampered with. So uh, if you take the time to vote, which you know I, I'm always reminded to tell people that you know it's it's not just your privilege to vote, but it's your responsibility. And if you are complaining about what's going on in the government and you're not voting, then you're probably part of the problem. So just keep that in mind. It's very important that you exercise your right uh, in this nation to do it. I'm a veteran. John's a veteran. We fought for your right to do that. So but I'll be sure to do that. Uh, on our city website, uh, there's additional information on the voting. Uh, the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce candidate forums are now up and running. Uh, the chamber held its forums for Chino Valley Unified School District, uh, Board of Trustees, and for the city, Chino Hills City Council. The city of Chino Hills will run these forums. They started this morning on channels 3 and uh, 41. So you can go to chinohills.org slash city TV schedule for that. And, or you can go on our website and uh, uh, access video streaming. We're going to have a uh, blood drive uh, Tuesdays continuing to the end of the year. Government Center, Payton Drive, parking lot 14077, Payton Drive from 12 to 5. Don donors are required to wear face covering. Appointments are recommended at 800-879-4484 or visit lstream.org. Uh, they begin testing successfully and complete for, um, um, for blood donations for antibodies for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the coronavirus that causes COVID is an additional benefit to all donors uh, at the live stream locations. Uh, we made an announcement <coughs> last night, which we got a correction to at 8 o'clock this morning. We're talking about the importance of the census. If you don't fill out your census, it affects how the distribution goes for your representation in the federal government and for the, well all uh, all government. So uh, it originally was uh, rescheduled until October 31st, but we found out this morning that that deadline has been cut by the uh, Supreme Court apparently yesterday. Uh, it will be now through midnight tomorrow night, October 15th. So uh, be sure and get your uh, if you, there's just nine questions. Uh, you can go to chinohills.org slash census2020 and you can fill out your uh, census if you haven't done it. Uh, we had something fantastic happen this last weekend. As you know, we had to shut down all of our concerts in the park. We had eight weeks of those during the summer for several lawsuits back to almost cityhood. Uh, we actually had a, a concert in the car uh, this last Saturday night. It was DSB, the Journey Tribute Band. They sold out. At 144 cars, uh, it was $25 per car. Uh, you got there was instructions about what you do. You back in if you had a pickup truck or an SUV. You could put two lawn chairs outside your car. You just had to have your masks on. Uh, you, the shops provided a $10 gift card for for the uh, your attendance, so it cost you a, a whopping uh, $15 for a whole car load. And uh, it was a fantastic event. Uh, Peter Rock and I both spoke briefly to introduce the band and to get things going. Uh, we're going to, on November 7th, have uh, Kenny uh, Metcalf and the Early Years Band tribute to Elton John. So that's coming up. Be sure uh, these things do sell out fast. Tickets are available for residents only through October 23rd. Uh, uh, www.machinohills.org slash concert. 
general public the public again can purchase tickets uh, from October 24th to November 7th, uh, 7th, the general public, but residents can do it up until the 23rd. And sorry to hit you with so many things, but we've got a lot going on. And considering the fact that we are basically shut down by COVID, and, uh, you know, I'm glad that the fire district has uh, taken on this hybrid format that, like the city has done as well. Uh, it's a good way for the public to be able to tune in, see your faces, know what's going on, and there's no excuse. If people don't know what's going on, it's not, they're just not availing themselves of the opportunity. So thank you for everything that this uh, fire district does. Uh, the report on the wildfire, uh, that's another important thing. Uh, we've we've got to be conscious of that because uh, we've got another spur in the, the uh, temperature. And when, you know, we have this vegetation up there, we got plenty of fuel for these fires. And that's our biggest fear uh, in this beautiful area that we live in with 3,000 acres of open space. We're always concerned about people. Uh, we constantly, we're still having people setting off fireworks. Uh, they're not even allowed in our city, but they're still doing it. And so, you know, some people just don't get, get the message. So. Again, sorry for going so long, but uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, you know how I feel about your district. I love you. I owe you my life. And uh, see my buddy Jeff out there, uh, who's been in my house, <laughs> not in the best of circumstances. But this is a great part of district before you go. I have a question. Yes. The boat crate. Uh, yes, unfortunately, the boat parade is canceled. Uh, there's just no other way we can do it. As you know, we have thousands of people that line Peyton Drive in front of the uh, Mormon Church all the way down to the Catholic Church in uh, Yella, and uh, we just haven't been able to figure out a way around that at this point. So, yeah, that's one of the sad things. That's our, so we've had it since day one. It started out as a protest about cityhood, and it's grown and grown and grown. It's been a, a you know, everybody says, you have a boat parade, and yeah. you don't know what, what body of water is. It's yeah. called Pete. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, well, thank you very much. Yeah, and sorry for that bad news, but uh, we're going to keep doing, uh, coming up with ideas that, uh, that will hopefully make things fun for us. And uh, God bless you, and we'll uh, see you later. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bennett. Our next liaison report is from Director Eli from IEUA. Please come forward. Good evening. Um, I will I will be able to be as long as the mayor. We've got a lot more going on. Um, but I, I did want to thank your staff uh, again and again, uh, both as a citizen as well as an elected um, chief. The the troops have just been awesome, and with people having to go away and then uh, Mr. Rolf and his team going far away so you had to pick up and there, as far as the citizens concerned it's seamless there's not been any level drop etc uh, i live right near the butterfield station they're they're active as all heck and i appreciate uh, what you do and what your team is doing appreciate what the board is doing as well um as for iua we're continuing um those that have to be here like our operators and maintenance staff they are the front line the the princes kings and queens of, of, of the wastewater world, they're out there every day putting themselves in line. Our, our office staff are still working remotely. We're, we're evaluating constantly to determine if we can do uh, what we can do. Our board has started to have some of us come back like you are and do a hybrid, um, but it, it's slow and you know, every agency has to figure out what's best for them. Um, on a very positive note, um, although COVID has impacted it, we, at the end of this month, on the 29th, we are going to have a virtual groundbreaking. Maybe this will be the first virtual groundbreaking in history, but uh, we, we, we did uh, do some filming with some dirt um, of the Regional Plan 5 expansion project that uh, briefly is a $450 million project uh, which will accomplish several things. One is accommodate the growth that's going to occur that's projected in Chino and the preserve as well as in the Ontario Ranch. It's going to consolidate solid waste handling um, and we have to close down our regional plant two, which is across from the Prado Golf Course, um, because our 50-year lease with the Army Corps of Engineers is up and it's in, it's in the floodplain. And then, of course, we're going to modernize and have advanced water treatment. So all of that is mostly funded by very, very low interest loans from the federal government of 1.3%, um, and grants from the state and other 
the loans from the state, and then the balance that we pay. Um, the beauty of the federal loan, what we call the WIPIA loan, is we don't have to start paying it until we're done with construction, which would be about 26, and then we have 25 years to pay it back. So it's a long-winded way of saying not, to, not going to cause any increases, although we are accommodating the growth that is coming in our area, modernizing the facilities, and most importantly for this fire district, we're going to have to work very closely with your staff as we build this very large project. Um, I encourage everybody who wants to participate, um, go to our website. Uh, there should be some details about the www.ieua.org. There should be details about the virtual groundbreaking. Um, wish we didn't have to do it that way, but unfortunately, that's the, the way of the world today. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our liaison report. Thank you. Next we have consent calendar. Let's see here. Is anyone present wish to speak on this? Go to the board. Do we have any public comments? We have no public comments. Thank you. Do any board members wish to pull on an item from the consent calendar for discussion? No. You two first. No. Okay. So we have a. A motion by uh, Director Krieger and a second by Vice President Sarah Ramos Evinger. I will now call for a roll call voice vote. Director Williams? Yes. Director Krieger? Yes. Director DeMonico? Yes. Vice President Ramos Evinger? Yes. And myself, President Har uh, Lou? Yes. Old business? None. New business? 2020 2021 CSDA committees, purposes for the Board of Directors. To review and approve board member participation in CSDA committees for the uh, year uh, 2021. Board of the board, Sandra Haney, please present your report. President Luke, members of the board, CSDA is soliciting interest and participation on the 2021 CSDA committees and on the expert feedback teams. CSDA has six active committees and seven expert feedback teams. Director DeMonico currently serves on the Legislative Committee and the Fiscal Committee, and Vice President Ramos Evinger serves on the Professional Development Committee and the Member Services Committee. Individuals <coughs> interested and not currently serving on committees or expert feedback teams must submit interest forms directly to CSDA on CSDA.net. Fire District Board members currently assigned to committees wishing to continue to serve in 2021 must also submit an interest um, form online. Expert feedback teams are utilized by CSDA um, legislative staff when a need for feedback arises on a particular policy issue. Um, the uh, feedback teams will not be required to travel, but will receive a handful of e emails every month. A list of the 2021 committees and expert feedback teams is included in your staff report. Online interest forms are due to CSDA by this Friday at 5 p.m. Um, October 16th, and notification of selected participants will take place by the end of November 2020, and committee participation begins in January of 2021. It is recommended that the board of directors review the information pertaining to the CSDA 2021 committee and expert feedback teams and approve fire district participation as appointed by CSDA. Do we have any comments to uh, any uh, requests to speak? We have no requests to speak. Okay. And this is the time for the board to comment. Director Williams. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, where's the staff report or the staff uh, information that uh, Sandra said it addressed about the, the CSDA? On so. page 66 and 67. Yeah, it's on page 66 to 67 of the agenda packet. Okay, thank you. Great. Director Krieger. I would love to do one of these, but work does not allow me the time to do it as of yet, but I'm hoping next year I'll be able to step up and do one of these. So I hope the two of you continue to do it. Director DeMonico. Uh, yes, I'd like to participate again with Legislative Committee and the Fiscal Committee. I believe these are uh, very beneficial to the district. We 
uh, get a lot of benefit out of it, get a lot of advance warning on a lot of things that are going through Sacramento. We have the ability to provide input. Uh, it does a lot for us, and I'd like to continue on that. Yeah. Vice President Obama was here. And um, I've enjoyed seeing all those in my communities on membership and our professional development, and I'd like to continue. And I, I, I agree. I would like to support that. I think it's great that we have participation at that level. And I agree with Director Krieger. I wish my schedule would allow me to get more engaged with that. But I'm very appreciative of your, both of your efforts um, to be involved in this. But this time, I'd like to request the motion. Okay. Uh, second. Second. So I have a motion from Vice President Ronald Evinger and a second by Director DeMonico. I will now call for a roll call voice vote. Director Williams? Yes. Director Krieger? Yes. Director DeMonico? Yes. Vice President Ronald Evinger? Yes. And myself, Harvey Lewis? Yes. And I am Karen unanimously. Next we have agenda item number eight, approve agreement number 2020-03 between the San Bernardino County Fire Protection District and the Chino Valley Independent Fire District related to the CARES Act Coronavirus Relief Fund for local governments. Purposes for the Board of Directors to review and approve agreement number 2020-03 between the San Bernardino County Fire Protection District and the Chino Valley Independent Fire District related to the CARES Act Coronavirus Relief Fund for local governments. Finance Director Steve Heidi, please present your report. President Luth, members of the board, good evening. As you heard uh, earlier this evening from Chairman Hagman, uh, this is an opportunity before you this evening uh, for partnership with San Bernardino County, in specific the San Bernardino County Fire Protection District in establishing protocols for a nurse triage program for EMD, which is emergency medical dispatch as an accredited EMD center, CONFIRE, a Joint Powers Authority Dispatch Center, has the ability to expand the EMD program to incorporate a nurse element. This would allow for further screening of certain calls, in particular identifying potential COVID-19 or other communicable disease cases and directing them to the appropriate resources for treatment and transportation options. As you're well aware, the district is a member agency of CONFIRE. Um, district nurse Leslie Parham will provide project management services for the implementation of the nurse component of this program. The agreement is proposed retroactive to July 1 and ending on December 30 of 2020. Agreement number 2020-03 proposes Re cost reimbursement to the district for direct labor costs associated with Mus Parham's services in the establishment of the nurse triage program, as well as any related training and travel costs in an amount not to exceed $130,000. Agreement number 2020-03 is attached for reference. It's recommended that the board review and approve agreement number 2020-03 between the San Bernardino County Fire Protection District and Chino Valley Independent Fire District related to the CARES Act Coronavirus Relief Fund for local governments, authorizing the fire chief to execute agreement documents on behalf of the district. Thank you. Clerk of the board, do we have any requests to speak? We have no requests to speak. Okay. Here, this is time for the board to comment. Director Williams. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I was going over this a little bit, and uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm a little bit hazy on exactly what its purpose is, what it's, what it's to do, and where the uh, need for the money transfer comes in. Can you kind of give me a, a layman's uh, definition of that? Uh, this is kind of uh, you know, legal stuff and whatnot, and I just don't quite sure. understand it. Of course, I would defer to Chief Shackelford to provide commentary. So I think if I can provide you a little overview of what she's actually doing, that may address your question. Uh, when COVID hit, there was a huge spike in calls to uh, CONFIRE 911 Center. Um, and the screening process, it was a little problematic for them. So that led to some other discussions of things that we could do to enhance that system. 
And as Chairman Hagman mentioned, uh, this also ties into some other things with potential uh, future services tied to the AMR contract and maybe some potential services that would be available through dispatch as well. So without getting uh, too far into the weeds, but essentially she's working in the dispatch center with County Fire's nurse, so they paired, so this, if she's not working by herself, but to develop and further enhance the EMD process, which is the emergency medical dispatch piece. And they're also putting the, the uh, skeleton, if you will, for ECNS, which is emergency communication nurse system. And that would allow callers um, that once they go through the EMD process and the dispatcher determines that it's a low acuity call uh, and it's not something that's life-threatening or emergent, they may be able to transfer that call to the actual, to a nurse that's there that can provide some other options for them. So someone that essentially needs a prescription refill, uh, but they call 911. As it stands right now, our only option is they call 911, we respond, we can offer them an ambulance ride to an emergency room. Uh, and essentially, they may only need a refill of a, a medication that they have, but they have no other means to go about doing that. This line or this system would provide some other options. And that nurse, once they, it's been determined that's a low acuity call, can go through a process with them, find out if they have insurance, who their provider is, connect them back either through their insur insurance company or offer other suggestions that would be approved. And it, it could be as simple as arranging an urgent care visit for them and having an Uber or Lyft go to their home and pick them up and take them to that visit. Uh, so it would enhance the service. It would allow first responders to focus on the emergent calls uh, more so, and also it would potentially enhance uh, some things for the insurance companies, reduce costs, and they can really focus on those truly sick patients. So it may open up some potential future revenue streams if the system is in place. Uh, so it's a combination of enhancing EMD and then putting the backbones together for an ECNS system. Okay, I think I can understand that. Thank you. Is she doing this permanently for right now? I mean, is she 100% there? Do we get her back at all? So she's still available to address some of the bigger issues. Uh, so this came about really quickly. Yeah. Started with the conversation between myself and County Fire Chief Dan Monsey um, about the need to do this. And, it, and Leslie was involved with the incident management team that was established that Chief Cook had a, a substantial role in uh, dealing with COVID. So all this is kind of spun from that. And we recognize an opportunity there. Uh, the CARES Act money is available to enhance some of the things related to COVID and to try to put this together to really, uh, this is, it's kind of a chicken or an egg issue. Uh, and I, I know you're aware of this uh, from your relationship with Chairman Hagman. Uh, we've been working for years to try to enhance the EMS response system. The insurance companies want to provide a better product, uh, at a, obviously at a, at a reduced uh, cost to them, but provide those services. And we've had this, this concept of this other system in place that I spoke of earlier, um, but the insurance companies are reluctant to commit to anything until they can see something in, in place, which makes sense. Um, but we can't put anything in place until there's funding available to do it as well. So COVID's presented this opportunity. There's this ongoing pandemic that we have a need to screen some of these calls through the process, and it may open up an avenue for ECNS as well. So she is available as we need her, uh, but she is dedicating a lot of her time to this. She's gone through some of the, the EMD classes already at the dispatch site, and now they're training some other folks. The ECNS piece is the next component. Okay. Director DeMonico. No, no comment. Thank you. Vice President Robinson, over yours. We've talked about programs like this for years. I mean, unfortunate the COVID, but we're able to take these opportunities and do, you know, better for our community. So I'm very, very pleased. Yeah, I would agree. I just I think it's great that the district that we have someone like Leslie available and they can participate in this and the potential to improve the services that we're providing. Uh, that, that's awesome. So I think this is a very good thing and I'm very much in support of it. At this time I'd like to request the motion. Motion to approve. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, Motion by Vice President Ronald Evinger and a second by Director Krieger. I will now call for a roll call voice vote. Director Williams? Yes. Director Krieger? Yes. Director DeMonico? Yes. Vice President Ronald Evinger? Yes. And myself, President Lee? Yes. Carries 5 0. Next, we have Fire, uh, Fire Chief Thomas. Fire Chief Schumacher, do you have any comments? I do. President Luth, members of the board, good evening once again. Under board activities and public relations, uh, September marked the six month anniversary of our SOS program. During this time, CVFD has handled 93 calls for assistance, 
The majority of these requests are assisting seniors with grocery shopping and medication pickup. Uh, currently, we're average only about three calls per week for service. On September 23rd, Deputy Chief Atkinson and, and President Luth attended the Chino Kiwanis annual installation dinner. At the event, Chief Atkinson was installed as elected board member for the next three years. On Saturday, September 26th, we hosted a Sharps Collection event here at the Training Center. And during the five-hour event, uh, we served between 50 to 60 vehicles and filled approximately eight 55-gallon drums with Sharps. Under organizational items of interest, I'd like to ask our HR Director, Christy Couture, to provide a recruitment update. Good evening. We are conducting firefighter paramedic panel interviews this week. And we are planning to conduct chief interviews at the end of this month. That's in my report. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. And I'd like to ask Deputy Chief Scott Atkinson to provide an update on the IT item of interest. Thank you, Chief. Uh, in an effort to continue to increase our efficiency and decrease the cost in sports services, uh, I worked with our senior IT support analyst, Chris Roberts. Um, he brought to my attention the cost of having the dedicated phone lines to the district for our fire and security systems um, at all our district facilities needed a review. So Chris took off, did some research, and we found out some interesting information that um, the cost for these phone lines was about $19,000 a year. The phone lines at four, Station 64 alone, was $15,000 for annually for phone lines. That was through a legacy AT&T account. Chris uh, went in and negotiated a new contract with our vendor, Pyrocom, and this time we decided to switch to cellular. Instead of physical phone line, we're using cellular. And what we found out is that by going cellular, we could throw that in our contract at no cost. So Chris negotiated a new contract and basically uh, reduced the night, uh, the, the, the re we got rid of the phone lines, reduced the cost by $19,000, and uh, we established the new contracts that are in service today with cellular which they describe as very reliable and somewhat even more reliable than the phone lines. And uh, we have switched over all our equipment and stations. And thank you to Chris for his hard work um, and uh, him recognizing that there was a better way to do things and, and saving the district $19,000. So thank you, Chris. Yeah. And this next one is a big item related to finance. Uh, staff received notification late last month that the district's been awarded a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association for our June 30th, 2019 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. This is our second annual National CAFR Award after having participated in CSFMO CAFR Awards Program at the state level prior to that. The district also participates in the GFOA Budget Awards Program and recently submitted an application for award recognition for our June 30th, 2021 budget. Upon completion of the annual audit and approval of our June 20, 2020 CAFR by the board, staff will submit this year's CAFR for GFO, GFOA award recognition as well. So I'd like to thank Steve and his staff for their efforts with this. It's, it's a huge recognition for the district. Thank you. And the district was recently advised that we will be a recipient of a new OES Type 3 fire engine. Uh, we anticipate taking delivery of the unit in late November or early December. For upcoming events, a finance committee meeting is scheduled for October 26th at 8 a.m. Our administration office will be closed Wednesday, November 11th in observance of Veterans Day. And a special board meeting is scheduled for November 18th, 2020 at 6 p.m. And that concludes my comments for this evening. Thank you. Mr. Chamber Board Comments, Director Williams. Thank you. Uh, in the OES unit, Paid for by the state, is that the deal on that? Yes. Thank you. I just have some questions. Uh, um, with my status the way it's been in the past few months, these are just some sites I thought I need to find out. Um, mostly directed to the chief, but I need to ask about the medical. Uh, on my medical, I'm having a little problem. Will it stay the same if I don't do anything right now with the medical? Um, you, you don't have to answer these right now. You can just give me a call or something. So this is a, a question regarding open enrollment. If you, if you don't make any changes, your coverage will stay the same. Okay, thank you. And uh, will I still have dental? And um, why haven't I received anything about high insurance? Uh, I, I applied for it over a year ago, and I, I have no information on high insurance. So uh, 
I'd just like to, to get these squared away. And like I said, the only reason I feel like I have trouble is because of the situation, the way they've been. I'll, I'll work with our staff and get back to you about the eye insurance. Okay, and thank you very much. Advisory and the dental as well. I appreciate that. And uh, I'd like to congratulate Steve. I know Steve always does an excellent job. He's very on top of it when it comes to this financial stuff. Uh, to me, the stuff that he's doing is like legal stuff. You know, you know I, I don't understand a lot of it, but uh, it's there and he, he does understand it. And that, that's a really good thing. Somebody needs to understand it. And um, the other thing is, is uh, We've had a couple of years of some, you know, pretty pretty hard times here, and uh, I think take care of the situation, and hopefully we can get things to normal. And uh, before the end end of this year, or certainly by the end of uh, the year, I'm hoping that things will be normal, that I can be treated as a regular board member, and that we can put the task behind us, and uh, we don't have to have any more of the situations like we've had in the past. Uh, you know, we don't need to point fingers or anything like that. We just need to understand that it's a lot nicer having things where we can work together and be cohesive rather than going at each other's throats and stuff like that. So I, uh, I really have liked what's going on the past few months. I hope you guys have liked it, and I hope that the past will not continue the way it has. With that, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for your efforts. All the men, uh, I am concerned for the men on the fire that we've been having. They uh, are on the TV all the time, and hopefully they're getting handle on those. We don't have to have our men out on those. I'd like to thank everyone for their support. That's all. Director Freeger. Uh, yeah, directly at you, Wayne. Uh, I appreciate the way that you've been the last couple of months. So thank you uh, for that, for your uh, engagement in the way that you've done it. Thank you. Um, Steve, congratulations on that uh, uh, GGF RB5. That's what it's going to be allowed. TFOA. GFOA uh, award. I, I know it takes a lot of effort to put that together and, uh, and for you to do that. Uh, I attended uh, virtually school board meetings. Um, they have a big meeting coming up this week, uh, tomorrow night, uh, that they're going to be discussing again. If the county gets to the right level, how are they going to possibly reopen the school? So that'll be a um, sort of lengthy and heartfelt discussion tomorrow night. Um, I attended the City Chino Hills meeting uh, just to listen to it, and the Chino meetings are always uh, fun and exciting. I think the last one lasted 48 minutes. So, uh, Art, <laughs> yours did not last 48 minutes. No, well, despite that, at least. It, it was. Uh, you were done with stuff, and then the council spoke, and that, that's what left. But it was a, uh, but it was good. So, um, you know the. Committees or the assignments we're doing, um, everybody's meeting and trying to get through this crazy time. And, uh, you know, there's almost a sense of normalcy to it now, a little bit. It's a little frightening. So, with that, just want to wish everybody well. And, uh, see you soon. Director DeMonaco. Steve, you just have congratulations again Thank you. on the awards. So, you do realize now that the bar is set. And it's not what we now expect it all the time. Most definitely. No, but really, congratulations. We appreciate all the hard work, and it's really prestigious that, uh, that we earn that award for all your hard work. And thank you. Um, I too attended a, a virtual meetings with the Chino Hill City Council meeting. IEUA, a little bit different with IEUA because I was doing it on the phone originally, and now I figured out how to do it on the computer. They do the virtual meetings, so I got that done. <laughs> and also the County Board of Supervisors, and and, uh, and they did talk quite a bit about the CARES Act at the County Board of Supervisors meeting and money that's being allocated to fire districts. So I'm anxious to see where that goes and uh, what we uh, what we achieve with that. With that, I'd like to uh, 
wish all my fellow veterans a happy Veterans Day. And uh, I salute to you all on November 11th of this year. And then, uh, our meeting will be canceled. It will be after Veterans Day. So I so salute to all my fellow veterans out there. Thank you so much for your service. With that, that concludes my comments. Thank you, Vice President Ronald Zevinger. Okay, all right. B, thank you so much. This is yet, and Chief, thank you, yet another example of what an outstanding fire district this is. This is why our district is so highly regarded up and down the state, because we are excellent. We are beyond excellent. So thank you so much, Steve. Appreciate the hard work of everyone in this department. Um, I also attended, well, I had two virtual um, Chino Hills meeting, a gender review, um, Carbon Canyon Fire State Council meeting. I had a Fred Burns meeting. We're now accepting applications. So I just want to put that out to the public. Um, so it's a prestigious award, and you can find the information on our um, district website. Um, also, we had yesterday our first um, CI, um, CIW, Chino Institute for Women. We had our first uh, meeting, and we have not had a citizens advisory meeting, committee meeting for quite some time. And I'm just going to highlight just like two two things because I know it's going to be late, but um, it was communities that they had zero COVID um, cases right now currently in Chino Institute for Women, and um, that they, they thought that was a you know big big accomplishment. Um, they're very very proactive in um, testing and keep, keeping people safe. And one thing that I didn't know, which I thought was interesting, is um, they have 22 in-cell programs for the inmates. So they develop this list of programs, and because they're confined, is, um, they have different like crafts, and they can do reading and different things. So it's really nice that they try to uh, to provide some type of activities for them, being that they're on lockdown, lockdown most of the time. Um, let me see here. I, um, Chief, I'm just going to read something, if you don't mind, um, that was sent to me, and it, it just yet another example. I'll keep some of the names out the way I'm going to communicate. So this was forwarded to me. This was sent to me, and it's it's from the daughter of Kevin Long, um, who just recently passed, and it says, just wanted to reach out and show how blown away I am by the community of Chino Hills. I can't believe the outpouring love my family has received in response to my dad's passing. I would like to go in, in particular, I would like to particular acknowledge the Chino Valley Fire Department. Two trucks full of men came on Saturday afternoon to drop off with my, uh, to drop off flowers with my mom and to offer their consult, condolences. On Sunday, another truck came by with flowers, art, which I'm sure is our organization that they're referring to, that's the only one I know who can be, um, uh, made the trip from Eastville to provide support to my family. It's a testament to the incredible people in this community and to the amazing first responders we have serving Chino Hills. My heart is overflowing with gratitude. Captain Tom Lamone gave his personal cell to my mom and told her, never hesitate to call if she needed anything. You won't find this kind of support in any other town. Count, I am grateful to the men serving at Station 64. They have been so incredibly good to my parents. I feel in the current state of our nation, these are rare, over-the-top acts of kindness and need to be acknowledged and shared. So thank you, thank you, thank you to this entire department. We have so many outreach programs, but to go beyond, you know, above and beyond, uh, I just thank you to all our first responders for that. That's to hear this, you know, and um, she just lost her father and to take the time to reach out, it really touched her tremendously. So thank you very, very much. And um, let me see here. Let me look back really quick. Oh, I do have one thing. Um, we have some gentlemen up here on the top, if you can acknowledge them before. And I just, a uh, happy veterans um, day to all of them. Thank you. So who, who do we have here tonight? I guess that would be the question. My name is Felix. Felix Sandoval. Okay. And you're yeah. with? I'm with, with the Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts. Yeah. Well, troop? Troop 1776. And you're all with the same troop? Yeah. Yeah. Is this for a badge or some some project you're on? Um, we are attending this meeting for the citizenship 
uh, in the community merit badge, and one of them is to go to a council meeting. Okay. Yeah. Do each of you want to call out your name so you record people know you were here? <laughs> Hi, I'm Abbott. Uh, my name is Cole. Okay. And then we have a really uh, here's the link. Um, this is Councilor. Yeah, Councilor. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. All right, a uh, couple of council, Chino council meetings, and I listened in on the Chino Hills last night, and I uh, appreciate that they also recognize the district and the that. But that was good. Uh, just appreciate that. Appreciate the recognition. Uh, this again speaks very well about this district and the personnel we have here and the job that you look every day. Uh, let's see here, we have uh, the agenda meeting, uh, the, the open house virtual tour. I, I, I had a little problem seeing it all, but it seemed like it was well received from the comments I was uh, able to see. And I, I again appreciate the efforts to, to do something like that, to be engaged with the community in, in, in a different way. So thank you to everyone who was involved in that. That was great. Let's see here. Uh, but, uh, again, I appreciate that. And just like it's already been mentioned, our staff, people, we've got people out, we've got people working overtime, extra hours trying to fill in. And it's just, it's very difficult, very hard. People are working very hard. Just uh, appreciate everybody's efforts. Appreciate Supervisor Hagman, Mayor Bennett, Director Eli for coming and making their comments and get, uh, keeping us up to date. Appreciate that very much. Chris, thanks for the phone. That's awesome. Steve and your your group, thank you. Uh, just, I think, again, speaks very well uh, of you and your staff, but also of the district and our efforts to be transparent and to provide good information and to make it available to everyone. So thank you again uh, for a job well done. Appreciate that very much. Let's see here. And then last, I've got uh, an AB 2147 announcement I'd like to read. As discussed at the September board meeting during board comments and as a as allowed by board policy, I have signed and mailed an opposition letter to Governor Newsom opposing Assembly Bill 2147, Golden Reyes, related to the felony expungement AB 2147, allows a felon to successfully participate in California Conservation Camp Program or a county incarcerated individual hand crew to petition for a dismissal of conviction. However, the Governor subsequently signs the bill into law. With that, we'll adjourn the next. President, excuse me, before you adjourn, just I was able to get some information for staff, and I do want to keep Director Williams waiting. So, if, if I can just provide it, thank you. Your dental will not change unless you've made any changes with that. And the vision insurance has been in place since you submitted the paperwork. They would have sent you information electronically. So, I would suggest you check your email for that piece. Okay. And how can I get information on the desk? I don't, I don't have any information on. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll send this to you once again. Thank you. All right, with that, the next regular meeting uh, originally scheduled for November 11, 2020 will be canceled due to a conflict with the Veterans Day holiday. A special board meeting will be scheduled to conduct this year's monthly business on Wednesday, November 18, 2020. With that, we are adjourned.